Yeah, man. So I, I've been outside, bro. Like I've been I've been having a decent summer, man. I've just been kicking it, man, in the slingshot. And yeah, mm-hmm. man, it's putting on a it's giving me a good tan, bro. <laughs> yeah, I see, I see. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> good tan, man. How you been? I've been good, man. I've been blessed. I can't complain, man. I'm waking up every day, man. Still, you know, passing it down to kids, so I can't complain. Man, dope, bro. Hey, man, so before I hop into, like, the, the, the interview portion of everything, and I'm not sure of how many of the um, videos that you've seen that I've done in the past, but one of the questions I always like to lead open, that I like to open with is, what is Cal Rafer watching on television? Whew. Uh, sports, really. Uh, I like my little criminal minds, my little TV shows. Man, I got so much stuff over here. Prime, Netflix, yeah, just yeah, yeah. movies, man. I be busy a lot. I don't have enough time, though. But, you know, every now and then I like to get a movie in or whatever. Any shows that you watching? Like anything that you keep up with as far as like shows and episodes? Now, the BML, I mean, man, that's my show right there. It was dope, bro. I'm, I'm hoping. But I'm ready for season two, but I'm hoping that situation will Make with, sure you um, like this video and me. subscribe. You, did you hear what happened with him? The 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 real the his son that that played me. Yeah, with the watch stuff that he was uh, I guess apparently it was something like he was he owed a jeweler some money because he was swapping out watches and never paid him. Uh Yeah, and it was like it was like a I think he got brought up on charges or something like that. So I hope it don't affect season two. I think you better pay that bill. Yeah, you better pay that tab. Otherwise, it's going to affect season two, bro. I hope it's going to affect season two, man, for sure. For yeah. Sure. Um, before we get into anything, first of all, let me go ahead and intro this real quick. New viewers, welcome. Our returning viewers, welcome back to Baseline the Goal Line. I am your host. Alan, Al Boogie Colburn, and in the building with me right now, I got a returning guest, man. This is one of the first guests that I had on when my um, when it was strictly radio, when we were doing the strictly audio. One of the first guests that I had on, I want to say, um, first of all, welcome back, um, McDonald's All American, former Kansas Jayhawk, Calvin Rayford is in the building. How you doing, bro? All right, all right. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. Man, no problem, man. Thanks for coming back, bro. It's been a long time coming, man. I, um, like I said, you was one of the first guests that we had on. And because we didn't do it um, on a visual aspect, when I brought it back to this platform, I wanted to you know, bring it back visually, OK? So, yes, sir. Um, but before we get into it, man, this uh, video is sponsored by High Lux Vitamin Water. High Lux is a bi- or hydration regimen of vitamin water with four different types of electrolytes, B-complex vitamins, packed with vitamin C and it has more potassium than a banana. You can pick this up at drinkhylux.com. You can also pick it up on amazon.com and walmart.com. I will have all the links um, below in the um, description. If you want to get this at drinkhylux.com, if you use the code word hydrate, you get 10% off of a sample pack. Sample pack is all four flavors. We have raspberry pomegranate, strawberry watermelon, strawberry kiwi, and red dragon fruit. So if you want to pick this up, you can pick this up at drinkhighlux.com, um, as I previously stated, walmart.com, and amazon.com. Shout out to Kelly Winfrey and the boys at Hylux for sponsoring this video. Cal, you got a case coming, bro. Okay, for sure. Yep, it's um, similar to um, to um, Body Armor. Okay. A very similar to Body Armor, so shout out oh, to them. You drink. Yep, definitely, definitely. Um, so, man, what I want to do, bro, is I want to just jump right into it, man, kind of like we did before, just re- revamp or revisit what we did before and just start in the beginning. So um, you grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, correct? Yes, I did. Grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. What age and what got you into basketball? Uh, man, I was playing basketball since I was five, man. Like one of my favorite things for Christmas was, you know, that Nerf basketball hoop. Got you. That, that kind of like got me going. I got a, you know, I'm the only child. I got a lot of toys, but that's probably the only one I really play with <laughs> okay oh wait you were only child i didn't know that okay okay so so that was that was like that was like your introduction with the nerf basketball hoop your introduction to yeah um, okay dope dope um 
at what age did you start like, did you feel that, I shouldn't say that you feel, what age did you really start playing organized basketball? And who did you play with during that time? Uh, third grade, I went to Maple Tree Elementary School and they was playing uh, uh, Washington Irving, some other elementary schools. It wasn't a big schedule. It might've been like eight, 10 games or something. So uh, yeah, third grade was when I really thought that, you know, God gave me a little talent. He sprinkled me a little bit. One game I had 72 points in third grade and my teammates were like, wow. Wait a minute, wait, time out, wait a minute. In seventh grade, you had 72? Third grade. Sorry, third grade, you had 72? Yeah, I had to get out of body. One of my uh, guys, Kirk Kaliba, him and his uh, guys was talking about it on Facebook. He said, "You remember Calvin had seventy-two points in it?" And I, I had forgot all about that. But yeah. So you know how long your resume is for you to forget about some shit like that. Like if you forget about that, you had a seventy-two point game. That's how long your resume is when it comes to basketball. That's dope, bro. That's dope. Yep. Um, so you you started like like you said, started at third grade. Now. At that point in time, were you also playing on traveling teams or was it just more strictly like neighborhood teams and stuff that you were playing on? Just strictly more around home and, and uh, school activities if they set something up with another school, stuff like that. Okay. When did you start playing um, traveling basketball? Um, I want to say after my freshman year at Washington High School, uh, Coach Gordon, James Gordon, Hall of Fame coach, uh, introduced me to Rick Cobb. You familiar with him? Yeah, I'm familiar with the name. I don't know his whole story, but I'm familiar with the name. Elevator Man was his nickname from New York. He used to go grab a coat off the backboard. Uh, went to Marquette. He was part of the Marquette teams. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yep. So right. yeah. Um, and 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 so prior to your ninth grade year, your ninth grade season, you didn't play any AAU at all. Nope. I just played for uh, John Burroughs Middle School in this league. Average probably about 40 points. And, you know, A, you were knocking at the door. It was more like warning. You know, I played for 20 nights. It was more warning, AFY, or, or my middle school league, really. Okay. So so since since you, you know, you're dropping 40 a game, and, and I'm assuming this is like in eighth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, you're dropping about 40 points a game and stuff like that. At what point, Cal, did you say, okay, I'm better than the average person my age. And um, what, at, like, at what point did you feel like the separation was coming into place? Was it before you got to Washington? Yeah, it was definitely before I got to Washington. Um, I played in a lot of leagues prior to going to Washington High School from third to eighth grade. And um, me ripping the ball, I had a real gift of taking the ball from other guards and stuff. So me doing that, seeing guards, passed the ball, didn't want to dribble in front of me. I kind of knew, like, you know, I kind of had something special going on. Yeah, so, okay, so at this point in time, um, since you are about five seven, five eight, right? At yep. this point in time, how tall were you during, like, your, your, your fifth, fifth, sixth, seventh grade years and stuff like that? I might have been, like, five, 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 six, something like that. Five, five, yeah. five, six. Wow, okay, and then... So it's easier for you at that point in time because you're so low to the ground, number one, that yeah. you have an advantage over a lot of ball handlers because a lot of ball handlers, they don't know how to stay low to the ground when it comes to dribbling and stuff like that, right? Exactly. And it's funny that you say that, Al. When I was little, playing with the bigger guys, me being like maybe fifth, sixth, seventh grade, um, you know, you play hustle, right? Everybody big me. How am I going to get the ball? I ain't going to get no rebound at five, six, five, five. So guess what I had to do? Defense. My thought was play defense and steal the ball. That's how you get it. So that's how I became a ball hawk on defense. Okay, okay. So you go to your, you go to Washington for your freshman season, right? Are you playing varsity right away during this time? Um, when we had practice at Washington our freshman year, I did start over with the freshmen in uh, JV and uh, down downstairs in the basement. It's a wall to separate. Uh, two sides of the gym. Varsity was on the other side. So after 30 minutes of being over there with freshman and JV, uh, they told me to go to the varsity side. Okay. So and this was during this was the first practice that you're talking about, right? Yep. They they moved you over to the varsity side. So correct. you played varsity basketball from your all four seasons, correct? Correct. Okay. 
can you give me some names? I just want to put this in perspective for the people that's listening right now. Can you give me some names of the people who actually played with you or played on that team your freshman season? Uh, Brandon Fane, Kyle Crawford, uh, Kiki, um, uh, Chris Powell, Trevor Powell, brother, uh, a guy named Latrell Spruwell, first team on NBA with Michael Jordan, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mark Mitchell. Yeah, we was loaded. We was loaded. And um, were you, so your freshman season, now I'm assuming you're around the same height, five, six, five, seven, around this time frame, right? Um, first of all, let me ask you this. Did that height, did that give you a chip on your shoulder? Did you have a chip on your shoulder? Always, always, because, you know, everybody say, go over here on the other side, you too little, and this and that, so. Yeah, and it was like, so I'm assuming because of that and because of, you know, the rigors of playing a sport where everybody is much taller than the 5'7 statue, you know, you know, especially during that time frame, because you had, around that time frame, you had traditional players that were really, it wasn't positionless basketball. So everybody was at a certain height in order to play a position. Like even if you had a big man that could that can handle the ball, no, nah, get your ass in the post because you're 16. Exactly, yep. You wasn't playing on the perimeter because you're 16 and you can handle the rock. No, nah, we need you on the, on the post. So I'm asking that to say this. Um, the, the confidence that it gave you with that chip on your shoulder and knowing that you can play at this level, was it ever a situation in your freshman season that you were like, okay, I don't know if if this is for me. No, never, never. It was just one time I can remember um, playing against, you know, I'm a freshman, so, you know, I was playing against some senior guards who was pretty good. So I wasn't, like, doubtful of my abilities, but it just showed me that these guys was a little ahead of my time, a, a little too much where I was learning. I used to right. play against Terry Bennett. I don't know if you heard of him. Went to Madison High School. Um, his brother Corey went to Burroughs together. I used to play against him in one on one every day while he was at Madison. I was at Burroughs. I lose every time. But I tell the kids all the time, I tell this story. Sometimes you lose them, but you win it. And what that means is I took note of how he could have let me win sometimes. No, he had that killer. He had that dog in him. And I told him, guess what? Four years later, guess who became an All-American? So yeah. it was a lesson to me. And then when I was a freshman, we played against Mesmer High School, Keith Stewart. Woo. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I held him a couple of times. He jumped so high. I didn't do nothing but see his foot, man, his shoes, the bottom of his shoe. So it was time out. I said, hey, y'all, please don't put me on Keith. That's funny, dude. That's funny. funny. <laughs> That's, funny. That's funny. Yeah, Keith was different, man. Yeah. From and I just remember like, um, like just seeing him in past and, and seeing highlights. I didn't see it live, but just the stuff that I was seeing from the highlights. Yeah, he was different, bro. And the body, dude. That 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 body he had in high school, man. And the the vertical, the forty some minutes vertical with the jump shot. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he yeah, was different. Man. He was different. Um, so. Did you start your freshman season, or were you coming off the bench your freshman season? Um, yes and no. In the first beginning of the season, I did not start because there was a guy named Mark Mitchell there who was really nice in high school, really cold, played with that Brian Gardner's teams and went upstate. So he was a senior, so it was his time. Um, so I was coming off the bench until, like, January. I was, like, six men coming off the bench. And then he got ineligible. His oh, that was the introduction of Calvin Rayford. Yeah, yeah. And that was, was it, was that, you know, you don't want your, you don't want somebody as good as Mark Mitchell was to, to, to become ineligible. But I, I can almost say for you, it was kind of like a blessing in disguise, right? Yeah, when I look back, I mean, I still mess with him, tell him I'm still mad at him because we went upstate that year. We lost to Pulaski by about three points. So I'm letting him know, like, man, if you would have played the whole year, we, we probably would have won state that year. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That's dope, man. So your sophomore, so going into your sophomore season, that freshman summer, what were you doing to work on your game during that time? 
Um, I just stayed in the gym. I was a gym rat where I stayed outside. Uh, back then, Clovenuck Park was the park. You know, they had the, it said to get dark, they had the lights up. So all the cold dudes from the city, whatever, that was the park to go to if you wanted to test your game. And were you playing AAU too at that point in time? I was playing AAU. I was going to Las Vegas a lot with Rick Cobb, and also I was playing Warning. You know, Warning was very competitive. So through those three things, man, one wasn't nothing but compete every day, night in and night out. Right. So leading into your sophomore season, how did you fare um, at Washington your sophomore season? Really good. That was the start where I kind of looked around, and I had a lot of seniors my freshman year. And then a lot of my guys who didn't play uh, varsity, who was freshmen with me, played JV. Now they moved up. So it was kind of fairly new besides me, who was already played varsity. But, uh, man, I think we fared up really good. You know, we was beating seniors when I was a sophomore, like going to the gym and stuff. You know, that was big time. That's when I knew that, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm pretty good. Right. When did you start getting, like, when do you think that you started – catching the eye, and and we'll get to the national scale here as well, but uh-huh. when did you start catching the eye of like the the local colleges to say, okay, we need to keep our eye on Cal because he could be really good. And what, by the local colleges, I mean like the Marquettes and the UW. Wisconsin. I would say my sophomore year, sophomore year, like I said, I, I, everybody was gone, so I took it upon myself to be more of the vet of the team, even though I was a sophomore. Um, and that worked good for me. Okay. So, like you said, that's, that sophomore season is when you kind of, like, turned the corner and you, and you became, I don't want to necessarily say a household name, but for sure a local name, like saying, okay, this dude is on our radar. We need to look out for Cal Rayford moving forward, right? Now, Definitely. were you at this point in time, do you think – it was to the point where you were striking fear into other players at this point in time? Or was it still like, okay, I'm still taking my growing pains and I'm taking my bumps. I need to get better going into my junior year. Or were you like, like when people saw Kyle coming on the court, was they like, oh shit, we got to deal with this, with this dude today? Um, I would say my freshman and sophomore year, not as much um, like my junior senior year. My freshman and sophomore year, I was playing against some tough guards. These guys were older than me, Danny Beer, Pulaski. They were seniors, so I was really more learning still, you know. Who's your mentors? Like, who, who took you under your wing outside of um, – um, BG. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Brian Gardner was, man, like a really big brother to me. Obviously, he left Washington while I was coming in. But uh, like I said, Terry Bennett, Keith Stewart, uh, Danny Beard, you know, these guys, Rick Spicer, these guys, just, every time I played, they were so stronger than me, and they used to rough me up. Like, right. man, you, you got to be tough, man. So I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, so going into – now we're right around your sophomore season. So how we – like, when you were going out to Vegas and you were uh, playing AAU – before we even get to your junior season, but when you were playing AAU during your sophomore, like that summer, were you were you pretty much still like on the national circuit? Were you holding your own and everything? Um, yes, definitely. I was holding my own. We had a bomb AAU team: Jim McAvoy, NBA, Damian Key. Uh, what, was what, was what was the name of the squad you played with? Uh, it was called Big Ten. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. We was man. We was like. Six feet four and up, man. Deion Mills was seven two. Big Kevin Rankin was seven ten with the Northwestern. We had Kevin Larkin, man. We was nice, and then we had me at the point. Okay, yeah, McIlvain. Yeah, he's from here. McIlvain yeah. is from. Um, from they say. Yeah, yeah, we're going to some Yeah, for sure. Um, so now we're going into your junior year. I'm assuming at this point in time, Washington. The, the team is yours, right? They were kind of like, everything was transitioning and, and the keys got handed over to you. Like, you run the show, this is your squad. Did you have, like, free range to call whatever plays you felt was working good for the, for the, um, with the Florida game? Or were you still, was your coach still, was it still like a partnership with your coach with him telling you what to do? No, nah, he was way more comfortable with me, kind of like being a, a coach out on the floor, whatever I see fit as far as defense or offense, or if I seen a mismatch, he would want me to, you know, to, to go for it. Okay. Okay. 
And did your um, did the players that you were playing with um, during this point in time were they were they all in with that, or did you have any type of pushback with that, like with, with, with you being having the reins of everything? No, nah, uh-uh. they was all for it, you know, because you know I was passing the ball to everybody. Everybody was getting an equal share of the ball, so that wasn't a problem. I love to pass, so my right. thing was be ready or be looking, because if you ain't, I'm not passing. Right, or you're gonna get hit in the back of the head. One of the two, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so now, like I said, we're you know we're at this point in time where it's pivotal, right? We're at the junior season, and this is when it's time. Like, okay, it's time to go when it comes to you locking in and taking your game to another level, number one. And now is at the point where you can start really committing to colleges, um, unofficials, and all of this stuff, like during this point in time, like during your junior season, right? Uh-huh. So, were there any camps that were involved during this time? Like, did you get invited to any type of camps or anything during this time? Well, before my junior year, Al, the camp that really put me on the map, I want to say I went my sophomore year, the end of my sophomore year, BC Blue Chips in Rensselaer, Indiana, the movie. Yep. Yep. So that was big time in the Midwest. If you was lived on the East Coast, Five Star Pittsburgh was the camp to go to. Right. So that was the camp, that BC camp. I went in the camp, five, seven from Milwaukee. Didn't nobody know who I was. Left the camp, Corey VP with uh, Jawan Howard from Chicago, CVS. Mm-hmm. So that's when everybody started to notice me and got my name on the map, that camp right there. That camp, so this is going into your junior season then, right? Correct. Okay, and at this point in time, going into your junior season, and this is this is, this is is why I don't, I mean, this is, I wish stuff was archived because you know how we can go back now and we can look at something from 15, 10, 10 or 15 years ago on ESPN.com to see the national rankings. We can't go back to the class of 1993 to look at that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's, it's, you can't do that. Right. So I say that to say, to ask you, were you were you nationally ranked at that point in time? Like, after, your, after you left that camp? Um... Yeah, yeah, I was ranked. I don't remember what number I was ranked because after that camp, my junior year, Silas Mills, top 50, uh, McDonald's All-American, came over from Custer to Washington. We went to state that year, but throughout that year, I was getting letters to get invited to this prestigious camp, Invite Only, called Nike All-American Camp. So I got invited to that. Okay, and that was... Did you end up going there after that was after your junior season? You went to the camp. Yeah, after we won. How how did that go? Oh man, that That was nice, man. Allen Henderson, Indiana, Glenn Robinson, Chris Weber, Jalen Rose, like uh, Rodney Rogers. I mean, the best of the best was there, basically. And that was uh, what year was that, uh, Cal? Do you remember? Ninety. Ninety. Yeah. uh, Let's see. Let's see. And it was called the what, what camp was it again? The Nike. Nike uh, pre invitation All American Camp. Let me see. I'm just seeing if I could pull this up because um, I just like to go back and just look at stuff to see, you know, just to look at rosters and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and just to see the type of people that were on there, so we can give the people who are watching a perspective as to, yo, this dude was really nice. Look at the people he was playing against. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but you said that. And I don't, I don't want to gloss over this, but you said that your junior season, that's when you guys ended up winning um, the state championship, right? Right. So that year, during your junior season, um, who, who did you play against like during that state run? And then once again, where where is your interest coming from as far as colleges at this point in time? Like who was really showing heavy interest in you at this time? Uh oh, I lost the uh, audio. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, we uh, I remember we played Plymouth, Hamilton, and Appleton East. Okay, and then as far as like you know that state run that you had, first of all, how did you do? Did you? How did you fare up there? Did you make all tournament team and stuff like that? Yeah, first team all uh, tournament, all that. Yeah, everything. 
Okay, and then as far as like your the interest that you were receiving from colleges at that point in time, who was uh, like, who, who was heavy with you showing interest? Uh, Michigan was coming to the gym a lot. Um, Kansas, Marquette, uh, Wisconsin, Maryland. Wait, 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 wait a minute, Michigan. So you could have been a part of the Fab Five. Definitely could have been a part of the Fab Five. That was my final two choices, actually, Michigan and Kansas. We're going to get there. Ooh, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Ooh-wee, that would have been different. Ooh, that yeah. would have been different. Yeah. All right, so you end up going to the All-American, um, the pre-All-American camp, and I was looking for the rosters, and I, for some reason I couldn't pull it up. But um, you were looking for the – you got invited. You ended up um, going to the Nike pre-All-American camp. Where are we, what are we looking at after, as far as like national rankings, how you did at the camp? What what are we looking at after you left that particular camp? But first of all, let's talk about how, how you did at the camp itself. I did pretty good. Um, like I said, you know, it was the best of the best who was there. You had to get invited. And um, I held my own as always, you know, now my confidence is sky high now. So, you right. know, I definitely held my own against the other guards. Because you, at this point in time, you seeing who you're up against. Was Kenny Anderson there? No, nah, he's a little older than me. That's more 88. I'm 91. So people like um, Corey Alexander went to Virginia. Tracy Webster from Chicago. Howard Nathan from PR Illinois. And Jason Kidd. Now, let me tell you about this. Remember, you had to be a junior. You had to get invited, right? I'm a year old. I'm, this is how cold J. Kidd was. I'm a year old in yeah. J. Kidd was at this camp, Al, as a sophomore. As a sophomore. Wow. Wow. Okay. That's how cold he was. As a sophomore. As a sophomore. Wow. Yeah, that's different. That's different. Yeah. Now, what, what was his, what was his, um, his measurables back then was he still about was he still pretty big yeah, he, man he was he was about six two quick as me can jump man pass fast unbelievable man to be that size and that body that's dope bro oh that's dope all right so we're going into your uh your senior season now right how we get to your senior season and you just you just mentioned right your, your, your confidence is sky high coming off this pre all American camp. Um, how did how did y'all do at Washington your senior season? And then now I'm assuming you get an, an abundance of, of of offers, right? Yeah. So let's just touch on first of all. Let's just touch on how you did your senior season at Washington, and then we'll get to uh, the offers and stuff that you had on the table. Well, I would say this: my junior and senior year, I lost two games through both years. We went on a 44 game winning streak at Washington through my junior and senior year. 44 game win streak? Yeah, uh, we, my junior year, we lost to Beloit Memorial, Ty Evans, and Craig Hodges. Ty Evans was on that AAU team. He went to Richmond on a, on a tip in at the buzzer. We lost. We didn't lose again until my senior year against Tulsa East, who put us out. Just think about that for a second. Wow. And you get put out by somebody that's at the crib, too. That's from the crib, right? That's all oh, that's tough. Tulsa East, my senior year. Well, who was on Tulsa East during that uh, time frame? Terry Preston, Marcus Owens, uh, Terry Porter, nephew, uh, Gary Gretz, okay. uh, uh, Nelson Alexander, Jay. Should y'all have, have won the game, Cal? Yes. Yes. What, 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 was, what, what happened? Like, like, Sports, basically, anything can happen on any given day. And yeah. uh, Nelson, you know, he probably wasn't averaging that much. And that day he had like 21, 23. We weren't expecting that. And he was a hero. That's yeah. what happened. Had, had, a, had a breakout game during your, against y'all during that time. Yeah. Yep. And it was probably, like you said, the basketball guys. The ball, the ball ain't dropping. There's all type of different stuff that happened during that time. Yeah. Um, so... I want to pull this up real quick. I did find something that I want to pull up. Um, and let me go ahead and share my screen with you. Give me a second. Let me know when you see this. 
Okay, I see it. Yeah, because this is the All-American team during that time. So Chris Webber was a player of the year in the country. But like you said, Corey Alexander, Travis Best, Allen Henderson, Jawan Howard, Jason Kidd, Gary Key Park, Glenn Robinson, Chris Webber, Jimmy King, Ben Davis, Jalen Rose, Sharon Wright, and you've got Cal right here, Cal Rayford. Yep. Yeah, man. So Othella Harrington. Now, some of these people that's on this one, on this one, is um, they're underclassmen as well. Because as you previously mentioned, Jason Kidd was a sophomore during this time, right? Correct. Correct. He was a year under me. Yep. Under you. So. Um, and you notice over here, it got the years like Roger Rose, ninety-two. Right. Jason right. Kidd, ninety-two. Ninety-two. Yeah, I see it right here. Yep. Jerron Wright, 91, and we got 91, 91. Jason, Jason Walton, Cal, 91, I see you right here. So um, before, before we get into the All-American game and then also what made you, how you came down with the choice of you going to Kansas, I want to do a couple rapid-fire questions for you real quick, okay? Okay. Best player of all time? Michael Jordan. Okay. Your favorite player of all time? Magic. Magic, your favorite player of all time? Okay. Quick quick spin off on that. The Steph Curry move of, ahead of Magic right now. No. Can he move ahead of Magic? Is there anything that he can do to move ahead of Magic? I don't know. And, and I'm going to tell you why I'm looking at it. Because you know, what people say that, they say, well, yeah, he's the best shooter and this and that. You know, Magic went to the finals nine times and got five rings. But what people forget, well, I would never forget, I seen Magic win a college championship, first of all. Curry didn't do this. Come in the NBA as a, uh, a rookie, win rookie of the year. Kareem got hurt, played center, and had like 42 and a triple-double to, to win. The like, come on, man, like, Curry a bad dude, but man, y'all forgot. <laughs> yeah. Who's your favorite um current like young player to watch right now? Curry, Kyrie. Okay. Yeah. Kyrie. I could I could see Kyrie. I definitely could see Kyrie. How do yeah. you feel about John Morant? I like John Morant too. We gotta work on that jump shot, but he'll get it. But man, I like him. Love him. Yeah. Um any players around the, the area? that you are um, drawn to right now as far as high school players? Um, and this, this I'm, I'm asking this, and this is for the people out there. I'm not saying this for him to to pick up, I mean, to, to denigrate anybody else, but sometimes, you know, we lean towards players that we like. So this is not to denigrate nobody. Really, right now, no. Nah. It's really nobody. You know, Jalen Johnson, uh, uh, Patrick Baldwin just got drafted. He, you know, he was the biggest thing coming out of high school last year. It's kind of really down right now, to be honest with you. It's a couple players. Um, um, John Bridges, I would say, would come to mind as far as the, the next person up from Milwaukee, Tayshaun Bridges. Look for um, Deuce Burks, too. Yeah, look Deuce. Yep. Deuce is nice. Um, Davion is good, too. Davion um, Cannon. Yep, yep. And my friend, Thomas Moore uh, was getting all the 30 and 40 points. I can't, oh, I know you're talking about. I can't think of his name right now. I know exactly who you're talking about. Three, yeah, he, he been yeah, killed. Yeah. yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. Amari. Amari. Yep, that's who it is. Yep, that's who it is. Yep. Um, and who do you have this upcoming season, NBA season, who do you have winning the championship with you? I'm going to go back with the Bucks. I think the only reason why they didn't win it because Middleton was hurt, or the killer. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because, I mean, and, and, and the funny thing is, is when I spoke about that and I was like, y'all don't understand how vital Middleton is to the squad. Like, him getting hurt, they're not going to beat Boston. It's not going to happen. And yep. people, thought I, people thought I was crazy. And I was like, no, Middleton is the closer. Giannis is the best player on the team. 
But Middleton is really the only person on the squad that can get his own shot anywhere he wants to get his own shot. Yep. And then if, if you follow me, shoot 90% from the free throw line. So you got to pick your poison. What you going to do? You got to pick your poison. Exactly. And, man, so, yeah. So when, when he went down, I was like, yeah, it's over with. I didn't think that they were going to be they was going to be Boston at all. Um, one more question: What is your thought about LeBron James overall as a basketball player? Man, whew, killer! Like, I was so happy to see and witness that. Um, I actually was living with Paul in Boston still when he kind of was a rookie still, so I kind of seen it up close and personal. But to see it unfold like the way it did. On and off the court, Al. It's like, wow, man, what an ambassador of the game, man. You Especially know, off, like him never getting into trouble or anything. Like, he's never man. seen his name attached to anything at all. Just clean, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people don't realize how much, how, how much of a, um, I shouldn't even say how much, but how tough that is to not have any small smudge. On your name when it comes to like yeah you can criticize him for not making the last shot or not taking the last shot and stuff like that but for him to be as like you said squeaky clean as he is without anything on his name that's more impressive than his basketball resume yeah and i like how he used his power in a good way and put his guys on them like rich you know they rich for life you know his high school guys you know he made some power moves with them I thought that was pretty good to him. Yeah, and it's dope too that he kind of like changed the trajectory of free agency too, where people are controlling their own destinies and stuff like that too. Yep. yep. Definitely. Okay, so you ended up, we talked about it, we briefly touched on it before. You ultimately ended up choosing Kansas, right? Yep. But you also had, you know, you said you had, it came down to Kansas and Michigan, right? Yep. Outside of Kansas and Michigan, who was really on your radar heavy? Marquette. Marquette. Okay. What was the deciding factor between – first of all, did you not want to go to Marquette because you just didn't want to be, like, close to the crib or what? Yeah, at first, I didn't want to be – I wanted to get away from the house. That that was a fact. But then again, um, I forgot who got fired right before Kevin O'Neill was here. But – they were screaming, my AAU coach, who went to Marquette, Ray Kai. So I was like, yeah, I hope you do, because he going to let me go. He going to let me do what I do. And my whole AAU team are damn near already over there. Jim McAvane, Damian Key. So we ready. We ready. He didn't right. get the job, though. Kevin O'Neill got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was like the deciding factor to push Marquette out the way. Yep, and then UNLV was – Another big factor where me and Silas Mills was going to go. Remember, Greg Anthony and them winning all year. But Tarkanian and them. Johnson, Greg Anthony, Anderson Hunt. Ooh, Plastic Man. Oh, my and, God. Yeah. So, but they was kicking it so hard and making money, they got on probation. So, yeah. no TV. So, that X yeah. them out. So, that just left Kansas and Michigan. And Tark was still there at that time, right? Tark was still there. Oh, man. Uh, okay, okay. So, like I said, you you know, it comes down to Michigan and Kansas. What what happened at Michigan to make you lean more towards the Kansas? Or was it just Kansas was just a better – like, what, what was the deciding factor? For the I didn't even go on a visit at, at Michigan. I, I didn't even go on a visit. Oh, wow. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I remember me and Juwan Howard was talking. We was like, man, what are we going to do? Because me, Juwan, and Glenn, we all Midwest, so we used to talk a lot. Uh I remember at one point, Joan was thinking about going to Marquette, which, you know, me and him was thinking about that, too. Yeah, because he right up the road in Chicago. Right. Exactly. And then kind of last minute, Jalen, Chris, and Joan said, we're going to Michigan. Mm, and okay. Jimmy King said he going. Right. And Jimmy King was from uh, Texas or something, right? Plano, Texas, yeah. Okay, okay. Man, wow. Okay. And then I, it was, I went out to Kansas on my visit, and I just, man, I love it. I just fell in love with it, man. Just everything was just warm, homey. Um, everybody was nice out there, man. And I said, this is where I want to be. Roy Williams was out there. He was the coach, right? Correct. During that point in time. Okay. So, like, like we just established, you end up choosing Kansas. 
what I mean, what was your welcome to college moment where you was like, oh shit, this is different? Um, well, when I got there, we was playing pickup ball and Adonis Jordan and Rex Waffles was all Americans at the time. So, you know, I'm used to going in my tricks, I'm fast or whatever. Man, he put that forearm on me. I couldn't yeah. move. I, I couldn't move. I said, what the fuck is that? That's, 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 you put that grown man strength on you. And that was that was welcome to college. <laughs> you ain't finna just be blowing by everybody thinking it's sweet, nah. Man, I really don't think I, I I don't think people realize, especially at the collegiate level, how good Adonis Jordan was. Whew. Man, Adonis Jordan was good. Man, he was real good. Nice. He was super good. Man, it's crazy. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, so that was your welcome to college moment. Okay, so you, you get integrated in, with, the, with the squad. Your freshman season, does Roy Williams pull you to the side or does he come to you and say, okay, this is what I want your role to be? Or was it kind of like get in how you fit in? And then whatever, however the uh, chips may fall is how the chips may fall. Well, I didn't play my freshman year. Me and Glenn Robinson was prior 48 back then. Okay, so okay, okay. We didn't play our freshman year. Okay. So I had that year to kind of sit back, watch the game, see how fast, strong, uh, quick the game was and sit back and analyze things. So that year actually helped me with the college game. Actually, I, I practiced with the team and everything. Right. Because at that point in time, yeah, you're still able to practice and do everything that you want. So you're still getting college reps, even though you're not playing, um, you're not playing in the physical game. You're still getting college reps and stuff, which, like you said, I'm sure it helped you. So yeah. then let's go to your sophomore season. So it's technically your freshman season plan. Yeah. But so at that point in time, like I said, during that, were you given a specific role? Because was was Adonis still there? Adonis was still there. Yep, he was a senior then. That's right. Okay, so he was still there when you actually played as a freshman. So I'm assuming he, at this point, it's like he was a starting point guard during that time, right? right? And you were coming off the bench. But what was your role for the team? Was it just okay? I need you to pick your spots, get everybody involved, or what? What was the role for you? Basically, to come off the bench and be a spark plug, and that's what I was. You know, get, okay. get a few steals, uh, pitch the ball ahead, make good decisions, try not to turn the ball over, and run the team. Okay. And then, um, did you stay, so during the summers, did you stay in Kansas or did you come back home to Milwaukee? Uh, I came home a couple of times, but I, I, most of the time I, I stayed in Kansas. Okay, and were you playing in any type of leagues around the area, or was it more so like you were just playing with the... Yeah, there was a league called the Sunflower or Bell League that I played in in Kansas City with a couple of my uh, teammates, Sean Pearson from Chicago, uh, Greg Gurley. He was from uh, Leewood, Kansas. So, yeah, I played in some leagues in Kansas. How, how was that? How was that in comparison, like those leagues? Now, you know... Here, bro, we got a different type of swag, different type of everything when it comes to a different type. You know, we got chips on our shoulders, all type of shit when it comes to basketball or just us in general. You know what I'm saying? Like, so how was it out there playing um, in those leagues in Kansas? It was good. It was very competitive. A lot of other uh, teams from the Big Eight at that time, uh, like Missouri, uh, Devin Booker, that I used to play against him, him a lot. Man, him real cool. Yeah, Melvin, Melvin, his name Melvin Booker. Uh, yep. John crude up in them and Anthony Peeler, you know, all them dudes was playing in this league. So, yeah, you had to bring your game. Yeah, you had to bring it for sure. Okay. So, sophomore season. Um, when did Paul get there, matter of fact? <sighs> Paul didn't get there until me going into my senior year. Okay. So, let's, let's fall back then. Okay. So, your sophomore season plan, this is when. Final four. Final four. Final four. Let's get into it. Yeah, let's get into it. So, you were starting that whole season too, right? No, I did not start. Adonis Jordan was there, All American. Even though your so your sophomore season that you actually played. Yeah, when I when I went to Kansas, Adonis was a junior. So when I was a sophomore, uh, sophomore he was a senior. Him and Rex Rex was pre, uh, preseason All Americans in college. That's right. Yeah, to the next. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And then, yeah, so that was the final four season, like you said. So, what did, so, first of all, the overall season that year, 
how do you feel that you fared that overall season? And then we'll get into who y'all played in the final four. I think um, I did pretty good. You know, me from not playing the year before and sitting back and looking. Um, you know, I, each game I just, my confidence grew and I got better at what I needed to do as a point guard when I came in to run the system. How was, um, because the conference back there was the um, Big Eight. You were in the Big Eight, right. So how was the style of play in that conference uh, different from what you were used to playing in high school and um, back home in Milwaukee? It was more of a slow down game as opposed to up and down. I'm used to more up and down. Yeah. And this was kind of like, at that point in time, you were working from the inside out. Like it was ground, it was kind of like ground to pound, like get it, get it down to, because it, who was the big man during that time? Uh, Greg Ostertag played for the Utah Jazz. We had a dude named Eric Pauley. We had a dude named Richard Scott, who was really strong down there. So the goal was to, you know, feed them guys in the post. Work right. inside out first. Right, exactly. Okay, okay. Final four, right? Who are we, who is, so it's, it's you, it's y'all. That was 90, what was that, 92? No, 93. 93, yeah, 93. Y'all Duke. Uh, Kentucky, Michigan. Kentucky and Michigan, yeah. Because that was a timeout game, right? That was the year Chris Weber called the timeout. Yeah. yeah, Chris Weber called a timeout. And y'all ended up playing um, Michigan, right? No, y'all played uh, Kentucky. Roy Williams' successor, Dane Smith. Yeah. Yeah. North Carolina, we play. North Carolina, yeah. Down, down the week, you know, them threes. He had like 27. And he played the McDonald's game with me. Down to Williams. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because that was like his coming out party in college during the exactly. final four game because he was hitting everything. Exactly. They had big Eric Montrose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Joe Lynch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they were stacked. They were stacked. <laughs> oh, my God, they were stacked. You're right. Oh, they were stacked. Because they ended up playing. Um, did they play Duke in the finals that year? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they was. Yeah, it was, Duke in, it was Duke in North Carolina in the finals. And that's when um, that's when Duke actually – no, 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 wait. I want to say North Carolina, Dean Smith, last shot. Yeah, yeah. I think they did win it in 93 because Duke won it in 90 and 90 uh, – 91 and 92. Correct. They went back, back in 91 and 92. Then you came back. Yep. Right. Um, dang, that's a crazy that's a crazy final four, bro. Like when you when you fall back and you think about that, oh, that's a crazy final four. Yeah, because uh, Kentucky had Jamal Mansberg. Yeah, Listen, man, if he never would have gotten hurt, sustained them injuries. Oh, oh my god. Man. Oh man, people don't understand how good Jamal Mashburn was, bro. Yeah, he was nice. He was super nice. Um, yeah, so let me see this, man. Let me let me pull this up real quick. It was um wait, nope, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see the most exciting. Let's see. It was 1993, matter of fact. Yep. And it was, yep, North Carolina won it. They beat uh they, no, they beat Michigan. North Carolina beat Michigan. Oh, yeah. Chris Webber called a timeout in the championship game. Yeah. Yeah. Beat Michigan. So it was North Carolina, Michigan in the championship. Man, that is crazy that Final Four was that deep. Yeah, that was deep. In New Orleans, in the Superdome. Yeah, it was, man. Wow. Crazy. All right, so y'all coming off the Final Four, your sophomore season, your junior season, this is when um, – Adonis is gone, right? Your, yeah. your, 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 your junior season. Um, Jock Vaughn isn't there yet, is he? Or is this the year that he came? Uh, I want to say this is the year he came, yeah, when I was a junior, yeah. Came your junior season, okay. Um, bigger guard, all of this stuff. So what was the battles like with that in practice? Man, he used to go at it. He, he, he was a little bit taller than me, but we was more similar. Very heady on the break and pass, do that. But the jump shot wasn't our best strength. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, who ended up getting the nod? Did you start or was it him that started? He ended up getting the nod. Um, in the beginning, um, I was getting the nod. And I think after a couple of games, they gave him the nod. 
um, they just said that he was a little bit bigger, and um, so they just wanted to go with more of a bigger lineup. Not to say that I ain't come in and, and do my thing to get a lot of minutes. So that that was the proposal to me. Right, but I mean, and, and I previously mentioned this, but see, a lot of people got to realize, like back then, you had more of a traditional type of point guard. Like even in college, point guards were six one, six two, six six foot. Yeah, so I get it. I understand that because like they probably felt like you being five seven, five eight, well, what you were. It was kind of like, especially like in the post, if if people wanted to go to the post or go to the block, switches and stuff like that. So I, I mean, I, I get it. Um, how did you feel about it though? I wasn't feeling it. Yeah. I wasn't because yeah. I mean, I'm 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 the, I'm the same as him. He he was a McDonald's All American too, so you know difference. You know, so I wasn't really feeling it, to be honest with you. It wasn't nothing towards Jock. He, he chose a school like me. You know, that's, that was looking at Roy Williams and, you know, what he had kind of promised me after Adonis left. That's what that was. Got you. Did you ever think about transferring at all? I did, actually. Um, me and uh, my boy Ben Davis, who played in the McDonald's game with me, um, he had called the coach at Hutch Junior College in Kansas. And he would take both of us. And he was like, come on, Cal, let's go. I didn't go. My yeah, was just, what, was, what was the reason that you ended up sticking it out at Kansas? Well, my mother, I talked to my mother. She didn't want all that moving around. You know how all these kids be moving around now. Back then, she went with that. Okay. She like, like, you blessed. You got a scholarship. Stay there. Get a college degree. And, you know, that was it. Ben Davis left, went to Duke uh, Hutch. Won the championship, went to Arizona, and got drafted by the Knicks. Oh, man. Worked out for him. I was just about to say, so looking back at hindsight, do you regret staying at Kansas, or, do you, or are you, were you fine with it? Um, I mean, you could say, I, you know, Michigan and, and Hutch, those are the two things, you know, you want to say that, man, I wonder if I would have went, what would have happened? What if, right. It's always the what if. Yeah. I definitely think that. I thought that, yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, so junior season. Now you got Jacques there. Is Rafe there now too? Rafe LaFrance? Yeah. Yeah, he there. Scott oh, Pollard. Yeah. Scott Pollard, yep. Yeah. Rafe LaFrance, Jacques Vaughn. How did y'all do um, in the big in – the, in the, in the, was it – well, I keep yeah. wanting to say it wasn't yeah. the Big 12, yeah. it was Big 8. Big yeah, eight. yeah. How did y'all do in the big, big 8 that year? Every year I was at Kansas, we won the Big 8. Every year. Oh wow! Did you so back then? Because you know, I so I, I interviewed um, Corey Lucius, and when they won like the Big Ten tournaments and stuff like that, they received rings for everything, right? When they when they won the tournaments and stuff like that, did they give you all rings for winning the Big Eight back then? Rings, watches, all type of stuff. Yep. Every every conference had their own little gift that they was giving out. Oh wow! Okay, you still got all your memorabilia? Yep, I still got some of it. Yep, some of it I gave it to my family members, but yep. No. No. You still got do you still got any of your uh, college jerseys or anything? No, nope, I don't have my college jersey. Nah. Oh man. Do you wish you still had some? I wish I did. <laughs> for sure, for sure. All right, um, so I think you froze for a minute. I don't know what happened. Your screen froze. Yeah, we go. It's all good. It's all good. Um so well, your senior season. This is when Paul ended up coming, right? Yeah. Senior season. Um, Jock is still there, so I'm assuming you're still coming off the bench. Yeah, yeah. We just splitting the minutes, going back and forth. Yeah. But you were still playing fairly decent minutes, though, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, how did y'all play, or how did you do your senior season? And then were you were you still? I'm pretty sure you still had ambition, actually, of going to the league, right? Yes. Okay, but how did you do your senior season? I didn't do good at all because my junior year, at the end of my junior year, I came home to Milwaukee, and uh, my best friend, Boo, Jamal Turns, and his brother, E.T., went to UW Oscots to play basketball. So I used to come down there and do camps and stuff. We playing a pickup game. I tore my knee, my ACL, going into mm. the year. So that was a rehab year. And then... It was really all jock then. Yeah. 
And then back then, see, once again, I want to put stuff in perspective because we think we're talking about 1993 or 94, 95. Technology wasn't as good as it is right now. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. So like the even the recovery wasn't as, as, as quick as it was back as, as it is now. No. Not alone the technology that was going into your knee because think about it, man, during that point in time, if you were a high school player and you tore your ACL, your scholarship was being taken away from you. Quick. They wasn't, you wasn't getting no full ride no more. It was over with. Like, ACL used to be a death sentence, bro, for athletes. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Ash. That's crazy, man. Like, when you start thinking about stuff, like, and, and, and just think about it. 91 was only 30 years ago, or 32 years ago. 92 was 32 years ago. Yeah. So you start thinking about stuff like, or 30 years ago, like, Bro, that's not that long ago how technology is evolving and stuff like that. Big time, man. Technology has evolved. So your senior season, you really had to fall back. And, and did you red shirt or did you just like... I shirt that year, yep. I red shirt. Okay. And then, so when you actually ended up coming back, first of all, how was the rehab for you? The rehab was awesome, man. I rehab uh, really hard. I would say, like you said, it was hard to do it back then. But I rehabbed so hard in seven months, I was back on, out on the court. You know, oh, I couldn't... Women's is like that, but I was shooting around though, because I was rehabbing really hard. Okay, so you set out that 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 what would have been your senior season, but then you ended up going back and playing um, for for uh, another year, right? Which was Paul Pierce's first year, which was Paul Pierce's first year. So when I came back from my injury after the red shirt, that's why I played. That was two years. I was with him for two years because that's why the red shirt. Yeah. Got you. Um, and Jacques was still there, right? Jacques was still there. So that was, like you said, you said you didn't play that well that year, right? No. Now, you're not playing that well, but you're still at a prestigious school in Kansas. You were getting runs. You were former McDonald's All-American. Were there any, was it anybody in the NBA that was looking at you to give you a look? No, no. So you did you and you ended up playing professionally overseas though, right? Yes, for seven, eight years, yeah. Seven, eight years. Let's get into that. So where did you end up? Um, what did you end up playing? Colombia, uh, Mexico, Norway, uh, Poland. Um, I was playing in. Uh, it was a league called the IBA, International Basketball Association. I was going back and forth from uh, Minot, North Dakota, to Mexico for about three or four years. Okay, and was was those was these leagues that you were playing with at this point in time were they considered like the top leagues for each country that you were playing in? Uh, yes, at the time, yes. Okay, that's what I mean. Yeah, at the time. Okay, um, no figures involved. You don't have to give me figures, but was the pay pretty good during that time too? Yeah, yeah. It was sometimes, and um, i never forget, in Mexico, they owe me some money, boy, because you got to think, back in back in the day, I tell people all the time, these uh, cartel people own some of these clubs in Mexico. Wow. Yeah, yeah, you got to be careful. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I was like, man, what's up with my dinero? You know, I had to learn that Spanish, and they was like, I was saying, manana, manana. So I had to go, yeah, so I had to go to the U.S. Embassy. To get get my money, yeah. I had to show them my contract and all that to make sure it was legit. And they didn't even give it all of me. They just gave me some of it. And I was like, they had never Mexico had never seen me again. And they haven't. Wow, you had to get in the US Embassy involved? Yes. I played for August Day, Mexico. Yes. Bro, that's crazy. Yeah. My man, I heard man, there's some stories out. I, I know some people. Man was was down like four hundred eighty thousand. Yeah, I know some. <laughs> yeah. yeah, some stories out. Here. It's some stories out here. Al. Yeah, overseas, it wasn't yeah, sweet. Yeah. I mean, I hear you know the, the even the athletes I still interviewed like right now to this day, I hear some crazy horror stories about you know the contract wasn't right, them not getting paid, people not getting paid on time, they getting paid four months late, all type of shit. Yeah, yeah. I, but overall, how was your um, how was your um, your professional career? Like, how would you sum up your? Professional I loved it. My experience uh, going to these different countries, man. It, it was I wouldn't change it for the world. And that was more kind of like the first time 
where I knew that it wasn't me. You know, while I was at Kansas, you know, I went to a little depression moment as far as like basketball. You know, I, it wasn't fun no more for me because I wasn't being me. I wasn't being Calvin Rayford, the person who I got to Kansas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I left Kansas, you know, I started being me again, averaging 20 points, 14 rebounds, being Calvin Rayford. So um, that was a good feeling, man. So let me so let me ask you this, Cal, and I and I'm I'm asking this because um this is a, putting it into perspective for the for the kids out there too, right? So um was it was it more so because you knew what you once were? I shouldn't say once were, you knew what you were like in high school, becoming an all American and things like that, and then when you ended up getting to Kansas and playing behind Jacques Vaughn, it was almost like they didn't value who you were that made you go into a depression? Exactly. It wasn't like they was respecting the hard work that got me to Kansas. Right. It was something that y'all seen in me. That's why y'all recruited me. Right. So, yeah, it was a, a lot of that. I got you. I got you. Um, so you said to sum it up, you had a pretty decent, you had a pretty good professional year or professional yeah. career. Yeah, I mean, you got to think, too, Al, all my peers, man, Travis Best, Corey Alexander, everybody playing, man. Everybody playing. That's why Ben left Kansas. He, that's what he was biggest thing. He's a cow. Everybody on our McDonald's team is playing right now. Right. <laughs> Travis Best was at Georgia Tech. Yeah, with James Forrest. Yep. James Forrest, yeah. And then, yeah, man, that's true. That's very true. Yeah. So, the Fab Five wasn't starting at first because Eric Riley – and Michael T was there. They were seniors, and then they broke through. They broke through. Yep. And then they ended up starting. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's crazy. Not, I mean, that you put it in perspective like that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Everybody. Everybody was playing. Right. Um, I know that you mentioned, you know, that you still, that you at that point in time, you was, you was still, well, I shouldn't say at that point in time, but during LeBron's, uh, like his rookie season, his sophomore or his second season in the league, that you were still like with with Paul Pierce on a consistent basis and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. Are y'all still cool now? Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Y'all still cool. Um, how was it um, for you just being around that? Man, it was nice. It was amazing. I mean, yeah. you and Paul used to talk a lot at Kansas about. Uh, this and that and you know as he got older and he started to see maybe he had a, ch a, a chance to make it to the NBA so yeah we was talking a lot and so he didn't think I mean you don't think he thought like his um when he initially got to Kansas that his his that he was gonna make it to the NBA uh, I can tell you this if I don't know nothing else if you're a McDonald's American you automatically think that if you just keep it up got you that's what I was thinking because you know when you when you said it I thought you were saying like he he eventually thought that he was going to get to the league like as he got older no, that was the, coming in yeah I got you okay but, now but, like, but, but in junior year when you're doing all good and you know you're scoring 30 points and everybody saying one more year and Paul Pierce the ESPN talking about no he need to go you know the reality start to kick in Reality started to kick in. You getting all these accolades. You becoming uh, first team all big everything and yep. uh, all American honorable mention. Oh yeah, it's time to get up out of here. It's time to yep. get up out of here. Um, what is Cal Rayford doing right now to give back to the game of basketball? That that made him first of all a household name in Milwaukee. You still a legend to me, bro. You a legend to me in Milwaukee, Appreciate and that's what I that's why I want to bring people on, man, is to give people their flowers too. You know what I'm saying, like. Um, you're a legend to me, but what is Cal Rafer still doing to give back to the game of basketball that brought him so many highs in his life? Well, since I moved back uh, from Boston since 2007, I've been uh, teaching at MPS and coaching at uh, Milwaukee Custer, which is called Barack Obama. Barack Obama now, yeah. So I've been um, giving back, uh, sent a couple kids to college. Um, uh, right now, it's tough to get you know, the Tayshawn uh, Bridges kids, the good kids to come to uh, city schools for whatever reason. They go into these, you know, Nicolays and the suburbs now. So, you know, I had to work with what I work with. Yeah, for sure. You know what, I, you know what me and uh, me and Gio was talking the other day, bro? And we was like, 
we fell back and we thought about it, man. Like, even in the Midwest, um, I think Lila Mir may be the only one in this in this area. Why is there not any good prep schools in the Chicago, Milwaukee area? Why do you think that? I don't know. That's a good there's so many, man. There's so many athletes, bro, around here. Like, and, and and we, you don't even have to get anybody outside of the Midwest. Like, if you go to Chicago, you come to Milwaukee, you go to Minnesota, you go to Indiana to get these players, bro. You got so much talent around here. I I never understood for the life of me why there's no prep schools in the mid. Like, I shouldn't even say in the Midwest, in Milwaukee or the Chicago area. Well, I would say our little prep school, if you want to say prep school, is St. John's Military Prep. Trayvon Trayvon Hughes was from New York who came down here, who eventually went to West Coast and went overseas, so. But, but it's, you, you, it's you not, I'm saying, like I'm talking about on a national level. Yeah, it's not on that Oak Hill. You get what I'm saying? It's not on that level. Yeah, yeah. Modern, modern day and all of that. Yeah, like why, uh -huh. and you would think, we got the talent. You got the talent here, Chicago, Milwaukee, Indiana. You got the talent, like why is it not? I don't know, man. I always wanted to. Um, I always thought about that because I heard Brandon Jennings was supposed to be putting a, um, a prep school together in Milwaukee. I heard that too. I heard that too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, before we get out of here, Cal, any shout outs you want to give out, bro? Uh, just really shout out to whole Milwaukee in the state of Wisconsin. You know, when I was doing my thing, that was my biggest thing, man. I, every time, everywhere I went. I said, I'm going to put Milwaukee and Wisconsin on my back. I'm going to represent for them. Um, man, I, I, I love the fact that I always put Milwaukee and Wisconsin on the back. You know, every time I represent and went to these camps, um, and to this day, everybody always showed me love. And, uh, man, you can't beat that, man. In 20, what, 2013, I got inducted to the Wisconsin Hall of Fame. So, for, for a young kid, Congrats, I was Five six coming from Parkline Projects, man. I couldn't ask for nothing better than that. Al. That's dope, bro. That's dope. Well, listen, man. From listen, dude, from the bottom of my heart, like I said, man, you you always been straight up with me. You always been a hundred with me. Um, I consider you a legend, um, and I wanted to get you on because I just wanted to relive this again, bro. Like I said, you was one of the first guests that came on when I was first started this back in 2016. So I wanted to bring you on again, man, just so we can get you visually and, and to tell your story, man. So I really appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you for having me again. I keep doing your thing, man. Proud of you, man. No doubt, bro. I appreciate it, man. So listen, you have been tuned in to Baseline to Goal Line. I am Alan Al Boogie Coburn. Until next time, peace and love.